told you, man. My passion, me, yeah. Can't do it better than you will possibly ever can. Cause they are so great. They team up with mates, increasing the damage that vanish just fade. Ho, oh, just wait. Ha! How far can we go? Screw Magnezo, we go for real Gax and beat him for show. It's just totally crazy, yo. Look, what that gets hot. Yeah, Zoro work hard. We are not afraid cause we go for one shot. We got Basimian squad. True. Brooklyn Hill. Get everyone out of the deck, keep it the opponent still. Got DCE in the head, we knock out water drill. Ha! Come follow me on this journey, and you will get it. It's still amazing, still. Yeah, episode 159, guys. Basimian, who's ready for some monkeys? <laughs> Welcome to episode 159. We'll be talking about Passimian. Yeah, you know this guy from uh, the Sun and Moon base app, but this time around with Ultra Prism, it got this. Another Passimian, with ha which has the power huddle ability. As long as this Pokemon is on your bench, your Passimian's attacks deal 30 more damage. So that will be a, a huge amount of damage. Let's say, let's think about this scenario. We're having three of those in the bench position here and we're having this in the active slot then this base uh, Passimian will be able to deal 190 damage so that is insane so things we'll need is things like rescue stretcher to keep reusing this Passimian because you can only run four Passimian in a deck and uh, assuming that we're gonna run three of these Passimians from Ultra Prism we can only run one of them from the Sun and Moon base set so things like Gladion will be a must and things like rescue stretcher will be a must to recover this type of Passimian uh, and if it's priced that's why we're needing Gladion and so in this situation, why is this one of the underrated decks that might just uh, pop up at tournaments and uh, do really well? Because Zoroark GX is in the format and as you know it, Zoroark GX is everywhere with trade. And uh, we're actually just destroying Zoroark really easily because uh, we are heading for weakness. And we are having this uh, a bunch of Passimians on the bench so we can even deal with more uh, opponents which I'm going to show later in this video. So uh, with team play, we're dealing 10 damage plus 30 more for each bench Passimian. And each Passimian gives addi additional 30 damage to the, the attack of Passimian. So team play deals 60 additional damage for each of this Passimian. So in, in total, 60, 60, 60, and the base damage of 10, that is 190 damage. And uh, assuming that uh, yeah, the uh, Zorak Jax is already weak to fighting, so we're actually uh, destroying everything. And with Choice Band, we're heading for an uh, insane amount of numbers. We're heading for uh, 220 damage. And with the Regirock EX, we even deal more damage. So in theory, we could destroy every opposing Pokemon. Think about Gardevoir, 230, it gets knocked out. Silvalli gets knocked out, Tapu Bulu knocked out, Glaceon knocked out, Boswell knocked out, Volcanion knocked out. And I'm gonna talk about more uh, in a bit here, but I'm just gonna say this strategy is insane. It only has a little downfall that if the opponent decides to use ability block, let's say Greninja with shadow stitching or Garbodor with a uh, tool card attached, let's say Floatstone or a choice band, then the abilities are shut down. Without abilities, this Passimian only is able to deal 10 damage. Hooray, I guess. So uh, that is the only bad thing. Although we're gonna run other Pokemon in this type of deck, so we might just uh, surprise the opponent with some uh, counter energy. So we're gonna have counter energy in this deck and we can strike out of nowhere. So. Enough about the bad things about this deck. We're gonna talk about the positive things about this deck because this is an episode and we're gonna talk about how good this deck can be. So uh, as mentioned, Zoroark gets destroyed. Let's say you have this as a setup. One Regirock EX, one Passimian, and a Choice Band. Then you actually one-shot uh, a Zoroark GX. Uh, that's as simple as that. So uh, that's the cool thing about it. So uh, we deal additional 60 damage and additional 10 damage. So that's 70 damage in total. The base damage is 10, so that's 80. And with a Choice Band, we're having, uh, yeah, the number here, 110 damage. My uh, the Times two is uh, one shot on a Zoroark GX. So Zoroark GX is everywhere. We're a one prize attacker. We can destroy everything. So you don't always need Regirock EX, but in certain matches you can just use Brooklyn Hill to get it out. So uh, now that we know we can destroy Zoroark Jax in one shot that is a great thing. Team play will uh, see a huge amount of play. Uh, if you're afraid of Zoroark or if you're expecting a ton of Zoroark try out this little rogue deck with Passimian. Another cool thing is that if you're facing something like a Boswell you can also uh, do something different here. You can go for Mew and just uh, have some of these Passimians on the bench and you can just copy the attack of every basic on your field. So you can just use team play with your Mew in order to hit for weakness to even KO this Boswell really easily. So uh, that is the strategy here. So 
that's why uh, Mew is in here as well. So we're gonna talk about what are uh, the Pokemon in uh, this particular deck. So I'm gonna give you a skeleton list as always, but first I'm gonna talk about uh, the things you'll actually need in a deck like this. So uh, listen up folks, the, the thing you will need is Passimian. You'll need three of the Passimian of Ultra Prism and one of the Passimian of the Sun and Moon base. It's as simple as that. You could also go 2-2, two, two, but then your damage output is decreased uh, by a huge amount. So uh, I would suggest running this and running uh, things like Gladium, but uh, more on the trainers, uh, this is the Pokemons you definitely want in this type of deck. One Regirock EX, it's not always necessary, but it gives you that extra 10 damage and can easily be searched out with uh, the Brooklet Hill as mentioned, so that extra 10 damage can uh, mean one hit KO or a two hit KO. So if you have it, one hit KO is always a great thing. Uh, Mew is great to copy the attack of Passimian, so uh, this is your main attacker, that Passimian. You can also copy it with Mew, so uh, just to have yourself another attacker while you can save the Passimian. And being a psychic type, you always hit for weakness, so uh, let's say you're facing yeah, a Garbodor. Garbodor is not a great matchup at all. Your abilities are locked, so you can also use Field Blower and stuff. And if you're a Psychic type, you can even knock out Espeon, uh, GX, or uh, anything like that that is weak to Psychic. So Mew is definitely a great card. Definitely included here. Then we have Sudo Wudu. Why is Sudo Wudu so great? Because we are gonna pair it with the Counter Energy. This Counter Energy will make sure that we can make quick work of the uh, yeah, Zoroark GXs. They will usually use uh, Righteous Beating on us and uh, if we are standing behind in prize cards, we can use Watch and Learn to copy the opponent's attack and boom, we can use that. If the opponent decides to use an amazing GX move that deals a bazillion amount of damage on something like a Regirock EX or something, and we're falling behind in prize cards, we can copy any attack, even GX attacks. That uh, does count for a GX move of the game so counter energy will work insanely well with Sudo Wudu. Other check cards you might include that are fun is uh, the Cobalion. If you're uh, yeah already falling behind in prize cards and your opponent only needs to take one more prize card, you can use that Cobalion. I do believe it's from the Steam Siege set. I could be wrong though, so uh, correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong. But the Cobalion is also one of those Pokemon that works really well with counter energy. The same goes for Shaman. The Shaman with Flippity Flap, you know the one from Shining Legends, can also deal a, a chunk amount of damage with a counter energy and uh, that is awesome. So, in this particular list, we're gonna go for Sudo Wudu because fighting uh, is definitely a great type to be and uh, the opponent will definitely use something like a Brooklet Hill if you're facing Empoleon or uh, even the uh, Boswell GX. They're also playing the Brooklet Hill. You can use that as your advantage, get your Sudo Wudu out. And if they try a Knuckle Impact to one shot one of your Passimian, you can just strike out of nowhere with a Knuckle Impact and a Choice Band. So that is amazing. Another Pokemon I very much like in this deck is Tapu Koko. It brings free retreat, the same as Mew. So if you use something like Guzma, you can easily retreat into that and then, uh, yeah, manual retreat into the Pokemon you were originally uh, stated and the active slot, so that is amazing. And also, with the uh, help of uh, a double Carlos energy, you can use Flying Flip, 20 damage on everything. That way, you don't even need to rely on Regirock in certain situations and you can just start one-shotting with team play of the Passimian. So, this is uh, an ideal deck and uh, the only thing you'll need is draw support. You could go for Zoroark Jax since we are running terrible Carlos energy, but an even better strategy would be running Octavius. Why is Octillery a little bit better? Because we do plan on running Brooklet Hill and uh, we can easily get ourselves a Remoraid. If it's knocked out, it's not a problem. We're gonna have a bunch of rescue stretchers in this deck because this one needs to recover turn after turn. So uh, we're gonna have these uh, amazing uh, Octillery here. Two Remoraids. There's an option of the one with uh, the Wild River or the one with Iron Pool. The one discards uh, uh, Stadium cards and this one can uh, make you switch to the bench position. Also, this Octillery is amazing because it has a Bisel Hand. It lets you draw cards into so you have five in the hand and you can do that every single turn. So uh, with that you have a bunch of cards in the hand and you'll definitely recover Passamian and maybe your double colorless energies turn after turn. So these are the only ones you'll need in a de deck like this. You could scrap this or this or this. These are actually tech cards but the thing you'll definitely need is draw support and Passamian. So the choice is pretty much up to you. For the energy lines, we're gonna start with the energy lines first since there are not a lot of energies in this type of deck is of course double colorless energy and counter energy and the choice is pretty much up to you but definitely run four of the double carless energies these uh, are necessary to attack for a single attachment on the passimian with team play counter energies you can uh, the divide it up maybe you can just play two uh, strong uh, of these um, counter energies or maybe three it all depends on your play style if you want to draw into uh, energies uh, quicker or not you can also have the option if you want to draw into energies a little bit quicker you can also run the energy lotto energy lotto is an ideal way just to get that dce when you want it because you can only run four double cards energies in your deck and with energy lotto you draw into those a little bit quicker than you would usually do also gladion is an ideal way to grab your dce uh, where 
is the Gladion. Let me just put it here on uh, the screen here. It is Gladion. Gladion lets you search your uh, prize cards and you can swap this Gladion with one of your prize cards. This is ideal to grab your DCE if you know in the early stages of the game like using Brooklyn Hill and you know that there is a double card as energy prize, you can use Gladion to grab it. So the Gladion, quite a powerful card. It's a, a sh uh, like a, a high risk, high reward deck because if none of your Persimians are prized and your DCEs, you're having a good time. One prize attacker dealing bazillion amount of damage. So that is the way we're gonna run here. In my opinion, I will be running uh, two counter energies to say the least in a deck like this so uh, definitely note it down only six energies I know it does not seem like a lot, but we have special charts to recover them and even puzzle of time Which I'm gonna feature later down the line Okay, now that we got the Pokemon and the energies out the way actually that I only forgetting one thing the optional Tapu Lele You could run Tapu Lele because uh, Tapu Lele will get you that extra draw support early game if you draw into an Ultra Ball If you don't have Tapu Lele, don't worry about it at all Maybe run an extra Brooklet Hill because that assures you that you can get yourself uh, a Remorate early game and you can use the Ultra Ball to get yourself an Octillery. So if you don't have Tapu Lele, don't uh, yeah, lose your sleep about it. Just uh, run something else in the deck. But Tapu Lele, definitely one copy could uh, be uh, crucial here. Tapu Lele for Gladion to get your Passimion because Passimion is your main attacker. And as mentioned, if that one is priced, you're not doing uh, that much. Also, the Tapu Lele can attack occasionally with that energy drive for a bunch of damage if the opponent has a lot of energies attached. Okay, now for the supporters. Um, so Supporters, uh, Sycamore, you can just choose your uh, draw supporter of choice. Sycamore and, and Cynthia are your draw supporters. And uh, the, the suggestion here is to uh, be running at least uh, at least nine of the draw supporters. So in this situation, you could run something like four Sycamore, three Cynthia, two N, or maybe something entirely different. N is great because you do uh, uh, plan on falling behind in prize cards, but then again, Cynthia gives you that automatic six cards, and uh, if you're getting ahead in prize cards, let's say you knock out a Zoroark GX, Cynthia will be better. And in a meta filled with Zoroark GX, then maybe Cynthia is a little bit better. But these are your draw supporters of choice. Definitely uh, run a selection of them and make sure you have nine draw supporters in total. For the uh, other uh, supporters in this deck, Guzma. Guzma will be able to target something on the opponent's side of the bench, drag it to the active, and you can knock it out with team play quite easily. Things like the Mew with free retreat from Face Collide, and also the Tapu Koko promo SM30 can easily be uh, your way out of Guzma to just retreat back again into your Passimian. So that is awesome. You also need Guzma to get rid of that uh, uh, Regirock that is stranded in the active position from time to time. So that is an amazing supporter. I would run two copies. You could even go uh, running more copies, but we do have another option to drag Pokemon from the bench to the active slot, and that is of course Counter Catcher. But more on that later. First, the supporters, uh, Gladion. I would definitely suggest running two Gladion with the Guzma. It's the, the battle ball between two or three, but definitely two Gladion because Gladion is your ticket to get Passamian if it's priced. Let's say you open your hand and oh, you use Brooklet Hill and you uh, notice that one of your Passamian is priced and it is the one from Sun and Moon Base, then you're totally screwed. You need Gladion, so that's why I also suggest running at least one Tapu Lele. It is optional to run more or something like that, but you're a one price attacker deck and you want to grab your Gladion in order to grab yourself the Passamian to attack. Otherwise, you will be not, you'll not attack for quite a bit. You could use uh, the damage spread with Flying Flip or Energy Drive, but that would will not win you any games. So. That is uh, pretty much it for the supporter lines. I'm gonna talk about uh, the supporters in a bit, so uh, I'll give you a skeleton of the deck in a minute. So uh, we're just gonna go over the item cards right now because uh, that is also a deck. This is a deck heavily relying on items, so uh, Garbodor with the trash lines will pretty much obliterate Passimian's turn after turn, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, but in a heavily focused uh, meta with uh, things like Zoroar Jax where we one shot, uh, Buzzwell where we one shot with Mew, things that have 210 HP, we cannot one shot everything in the format and that's the strength a one prize attacker doing that definitely has its uh, right to get its own episode for the item cards definitely you earn yourself for Ultra Ball, it's in every deck. Uh, this is uh, no different here. Ultra Ball gives you the ticket to get your Passimian out, or uh, maybe your Regirock, your Tapu Koko. It all depends on uh, the situation. Rescue Stretcher, uh, this is one of the cards. It is debatable, you could run one, you could run two, you could run three, or maybe even more. Uh, I'm gonna give you the skeleton in a minute, but uh, Rescue Stretcher is one of those cards that can grab yourself the Passimian turn after turn. You could also uh, shuffle three of uh, any combination of Pokemon back into your deck, which is amazing, which uh, means you can use it uh, with Brooklyn Hill to grab them immediately from the deck. So Rescue Stretcher, one of the best cards in the deck because your main attacker will go down 
after it uses Team Play because uh, it's a quite a powerful Pokemon. So uh, other things you might include in a deck like this is Fighting Fury Belt. I uh, have not put it in the skeleton list, but Fighting Fury Belt ups the uh, HP of the Passimian by 40 HP and it also gives you additional 10 damage, which will bring it up to 150 HP and 150 HP is nothing to mess with. The bad thing is that the opponent could use uh, something like Mallow, Field Blow or anything just to grab himself the Field Blow and boom, your tool card is away and they one shot you once again. So F Fighting Fury Belt, not our reliable choice band is a little bit better since you have more control over it. Uh, for more item cards, we're gonna have the retreat method here, float stones. Uh, I do recommend running at least two of these float stones to grab, you, get yourself out of awkward situations where you're stranded in the active position with the wrong Passimian or Regirock EX, which has a bazillion amount of retreat cost, as you know. So uh, float stone definitely a must in a deck like this. And uh, then for the other thing that is a must, it is four puzzles of time. Puzzles of time might be weird in a deck like this because uh, we don't run Zora GX or you might run Zora GX. In my case, I run Octillery. If we have one puzzle of time and we draw into the second one, we can get everything back from the discard, which means, yes, you guessed it, Passimian is back with a DCE. You can grab your special energies back. You can grab your Passimian back. You can grab your Guzma back. Everything can grab can be grabbed back from the discard. And that's why Puzzle of Time has seen a huge amount of play and on a lot of decks with Zoroark or with other decks in general. So. In this situation, I do adore the Puzzle of Time because it will help us in the late game quite a bit. Next up is Choice Band. I already talked about Choice Band. Choice Band is the one uh, to, to uh, play here uh, over the Fighting Fury Belt because we're dealing that additional 30 damage and that will get us closer to a one-hit KO on a Zoroark even with a low amount of resources. We don't need a lot of Bench Passimians to deal that amount of damage. And with three Choice Band, we do assure that we can draw into the Choice Band uh, early game to get the pressure going. So uh, Choice Band dealing 30 extra damage to G-axis and E-axis is amazing and every deck so uh, let's do that again in this deck energy lotto talked about this before you could run one copy you could run two i'm gonna give you the skeleton of the deck uh, in a minute so uh, energy lotto gets you closer to that dce on your second turn to attack Field Blower, this is debatable, you could run maybe one, maybe two, but if you're facing Garbodor, you're screwed either way, but Field Blower at least gives you a chance. You can use Guzma on the uh, Garbotoxin Garbodor, knock it out, uh, after you use, you use Field Blower, because with Field Blower, all the abilities of the Passimian get reactivated and you can definitely one-shot it. So uh, yeah, Field Blower, definitely a must in the deck. Special Charge. Is debatable whether to run it or not but uh, I do think it's necessary if your DCEs go in the discard really fast you can grab them back to the deck with special charge. Counter catcher also uh, optional you, you don't even have to run counter catcher but it's an ideal way just to grab something of the opponent's bench if you're falling behind I would counter uh, energy as well you can definitely get yourself back in the game counter energy counter catcher pseudo voodoo and it's on. Things like Nest Ball are also great in a deck like this and uh, the last cards I want to mention here is uh, Brooklyn Hills. Brooklyn Hill gets everything out of the deck except for your Tapu Koko and your Lele so you can get your Regirock, your Passimian, uh, also Mew cannot get out with Brooklyn Hill but just saying you can get your Passimian, your uh, Regirock EX, your Remorade so everything can get uh, on the on the bench early game with Brooklyn Hill, definitely run three copies and as well is an additional way to get more Passimian into play. We're not running any Bridget even though Bridget could be uh, the case here. I'm gonna grab some more cards here. We're having Strong Energy as an optional card getting an extra 20 damage but you'll need an extra attachment so I don't think it has a room in this type of deck, but I'm definitely gonna mention it regardless. So, uh, strong energy could be used maybe on the other Passimian. I don't know, it's uh, an option. Professor Kukui, also extra 20 damage, so you could go overboard with your damage output if you're finding the room for Kukui, but it all depends. I still have to play test, so I have not tested Kukui yet uh, for the draw support. So, uh, with, ra ra with Octillery and uh, the option to use Tapu later for Kukui, it might just be having a spot in this deck. Bridget, also great early game, but uh, then you'll need to rely on your Tapu Lele. You'll need more Tapu Lele in order to make use of this Bridget. But one copy of Bridget, who knows? And Enhanced Hammer to slow the opponent down. So, those are the cards I'm gonna talk about in this video. And now we're just gonna go straightly into the. Uh, the deck that I'm thinking of the skeleton list. I'm gonna give you everything that I think is necessary in a deck like this. So uh, are you guys ready? We're definitely gonna run one Passimian. We're gonna run three of the Passimian of Ultra Prism. Uh, Sudo Wudu is optional, but in this skeleton, I'm definitely gonna include it. Mew, I'm gonna include. One Regirock, I'm gonna include. And then, um, for the artillery line, a 1-1 one, one line, I would include that in the skeleton. So uh, that's one card that we're not running as uh, the second rem rate. So in the skeleton, this is a, just a skeleton list. Tapu Koko is optional, so that is just your choice. And then uh, one Lele. Uh, I do definitely want to include it in this list because it helps out quite a bit. So uh, 
that is for the Pokemon Skeleton. So we're already two slots that I'm uh, discarding here. So uh, next up for the draw supporters, I think uh, we're gonna run four Sycamore. We can get everything back regardless with Puzzle of Time and a special charge. So uh, we're also gonna run two Cynthia, or actually a two N, and then uh, two Cynthia in the Skeleton. Then uh, also two Guzma, I talked about every card so far, so uh, if you want more information just uh, rewind the video and just check it again. Two Gladion, so that is the skeleton for now. Okay, next up for the items. The puzzles of time are a must, so that is four in the deck. Ultra Ball, again, also a must in the deck, that again is a number of four. Rescue Stretcher will be a number of three, you could add it up to four copies if you want to, but that's just optional. optional. Uh, float Stones, I would run two copies or maybe even three. In this skeleton, I'll definitely go with three copies because, yeah, if you start with Regirock, it's screwed. If you start with this Passimian, it's screwed. You want to get out of the active position as quickly as possible. You can also swap a Floatstone for a Guzma. It's all personal preference, so this is the skeleton list. As I mentioned, you'll have some open spots later down the line. Three Choice Band is a must. One Energy Lotto, I would definitely would run one since this will get you closer to the double card as energies as mentioned. Then. Two field blower. These field blowers are awesome. They will uh, help you out in a lot of matches. So we're gonna have to make some more room because the screen is already filled with a lot of cards here with Spasimian auxiliary lines and stuff. So next up is a special charge. Definitely run one of these. Counter Cutcher is optional, not gonna include it in the skeleton list. So uh, that gives you some more room to work with. Then uh, let's just uh, put Remorate aside here, so that is a Remorate and an Octillery, so that's a 1-1 one, one line. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, let's just put the cards a little bit down here, so the, we can have some room for this Brocklet Hill, which we're gonna run 3 copies of in the Skeleton. So, th I know this is not a 60 card deck, I know that very well, but this is a Skeleton to get, get you guys started. Also, 2 of these Nest Ball will come in handy, so let's just put these aside. Cannot find the room to put everything in, so uh, there we go. Two Nest Ball, so that gives you at least a whole lot of room to work with. Then for the energies for DCE, I'm just gonna lay them in the middle here for DCE, and then two counter energy. So that is the skeleton list that gives you one, two, three, four, five, six spots open in the list to work with. So that is 54. Uh, 54 cards, so if you have this, you're already doing a great job. You have six additional slots to fill in. Fill in where you need uh, and uh, let me know what you think about this deck. Also, this is kind of a long video, so uh, if you enjoyed the content, be sure to support the channel as much as you can by destroying the like button and sharing the video with your friends and family. Anyway, this was Zapdos TCG here. Thanks again for uh, watching another uh, deck analysis video. Passimian is very good. You'll see it soon enough on a TCG online match as well. It hits for a bazillion amount of damage. It's great. It's also fun to play with because you can get everything out with Brooklyn Hill and it is one of those decks that relies on Gladian and I love using Gladian in decks. Anyways, have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you guys tomorrow with more Pokemon TCG content. Peace out.